As a reader of financial statements, one of the things that you will want to do is to evaluate how the company is doing. In doing so, one of the things that you want to take a look at is how is the retained earnings doing. As we said before, that retained earnings is the net income that the company retains for use in the business. If it isn't distributed back to the shareholders in the form of dividends, it's retained in the company. So net income increases retained earnings and a net loss will decrease retained earnings as we go on from period to period. The retained earnings is part of the stockholders claim on the total assets of the corporation. So in the event of a liquidation, shareholders would be expected to receive their retained earnings as a compensation for the dissolution. In the event that there's a, a debit balance in the retained earnings account, and remember retained earnings is normally a credit balance normal balance, that would mean that they have more losses or they've reduced their retained earnings to the point where it's negative and therefore we call it a deficit. So here's an example of what Amazon.com may have looked like when they had a deficit. Notice that there's brackets around the accumulated deficit instead of calling it retained earnings. Now, retained earnings are supposed to be distributed to the shareholders in the form of dividends. However, there may be times when or the organization has to restrict the retained earnings from distributions because of either legal reasons, contractual reasons, or voluntary reasons. Many times when you borrow money from a bank, the bank will require that the company maintain a certain level of retained earnings to protect the, the bank for, for their loan. Also, for legal purposes, there may be restrictions on retained earnings so that a company doesn't zero out the retained earnings and cause the company to go into a deficit. Because in many cases, when a company has a deficit in retained earnings, many people question the viability of the corporation. So from a balance sheet presentation, there's two classifications of the paid-in capital the capital stock and the additional paid in capital. So here's an example of what the balance sheet might look like. You have paid in capital with the common stock with both showing the preferred stock and the common stock and the additional paid in capital. Then they would show the retained earnings less the tre treasury stock in order to determine how much is in the stockholders equity. From a ratio standpoint, one of the ratios that you may want to look at is called the payout ratio, which is the cash dividends declared on common stock divided by net income. This pretty much tells you how much the company pays out in dividends in relationship to how much money it makes. Another ratio is the return on common stockholders equity. When we talk about return on stockholders equity, we're asking is how much income does it make in relationship to how much is invested in stockholders equity? So we take the net income minus the preferred stock dividends because preferred stock dividends is almost like interest for the preferred stockholders. And we want to specifically look at just the common stockholders portion. So we would take the net income minus the preferred stock dividends and divide it by the average common stockholders equity. Remember, common stockholders equity, not total stockholders equity. So we would take the beginning balance plus the ending balance and divide it by two. This ratio shows how many dollars of net income a company's earned for each dollar of common stock. Now the question is, should we borrow money, sell bonds, or sell stock? 
If we sell bonds, one of the biggest advantage is that we do not give up control of stock. When we sell bond, we're borrowing money and we're not giving up ownership. Also an advantage of bond financing is that the interest paid on the bond is tax deductible. Whereas if we pay out a dividend, we cannot deduct the payment of a dividend and we have to reduce our retained earnings. The return on common stockholders equity may be higher when we do a bond because we're not affecting stockholders equity. So when we make a decision, we have to ask ourselves, if we're going for long-term financing, how is it going to affect our ratios when people analyze how we're doing? Are we concerned about the return on assets or how leveraged the company is? Leverage meaning of how much we borrow in relationship to the amount of assets we have. So big question, do we borrow with a bond or do we sell additional stock? It all depends upon what we want to do with our corporation.